Hi friends, I hope you're doing well. The calm before the storm here in Pennsylvania. We're supposed to get like a foot of snow. Just started about an hour ago. I'm just sitting out by the campfire. It's been an interesting week in and out of the hospital for elevated blood pressure for Katie and the truck issue I wanted to follow back with. So we're gonna do that today. Just a little video before it gets dark here while we're out enjoying the, the cold weather. Thanks to all that actually reached out just to check in on us, make sure we were all right. So the first thing on the truck was the wheel speed sensor. The right rear wheel, wheel speed sensor was acting up for probably like the last six months. That kicked the traction control in and out and all kinds of stuff. So I had to fix that first. And the next thing was the engine acting up. Let me see here. Come on, come on. All right, so nice and smooth, running good, idling good. Everything's all fixed up. So if you've ever been in one of those situations where you don't have the time to fix your own vehicle, typically you just take it to the dealership and see what happens. But I knew with this one there could be more costs that I didn't want to incur at the, at the present time with the baby on the way. So I did spend the time out in the cold and got it all got it all fixed up. Took it out of my buddy's garage and it will show you, but you can hear it's running great, idling smooth, everything else. Let me show you what we did. So the first thing I changed when the engine was acting up was the cam positioning sensor. Vehicle wouldn't start, wouldn't run. It was throwing all kinds of codes and it was acting up big time. So we started there. Cam positioning sensor sits in there. There's two bolts for the cover. Well, one's a cover and one holds in the cam positioning sensor. The one on the left side that's over here that you're not gonna really be able to see, that's just like a U-shaped slot for the cover. So all you have to do is loosen that up with a 10 millimeter and pull it out. And then you take out the other bolt. You can take the belt off real quick and drop that out. And then the cover's out of your way. You're gonna pull that cam positioning sensor out when the cam positioning sensor comes out, it's probably gonna be broken. You don't wanna try not to break it off inside, but uh, with a bunch of picks, you'll be able to get it out. The new one should slide in pretty easy. That was the first thing. The next thing is when you pull this cover off, you're gonna see this PCV valve hose. That we broke because it was so brittle, and it's only been about seven degrees here in like the last week. That needed changed. Pull that PCV valve hose out, get that done. So real fast, here's, here's the PCV valve hose that we cracked. It was real brittle, real dry got that all fixed up. I had to use a little temporary piece of hose to go over top of it just until I could order the new one and get it fixed. But this thing was only like 10 bucks. So if you do break it, it's like nine, 10 bucks at your dealership. Lastly, I changed a sensor, which is right here. Okay. And this sensor, I know you're not gonna be able to see it. That's the map sensor. I changed that as well, just because while I was under here, I wanted to get it all done. I'm not a mechanic or anything like that, but I tend to try to fix things if I have the time to fix them. So when the vehicle was acting up, that's what I started with, and that was the first code. So we solved that. The next code, even though I replaced this, was the mass airflow sensor. So this sensor here, you may want to change that or may want to, uh, they make a cleaner. You can spray them out and clean them out. It's a specialized cleaner for mass airflows. You also want to make sure that your um, intake box is clean and your air filter is clean. I, I run a K&N air, air filter in there, and it was pretty clean. I just changed it probably, I'm going to say six, eight, uh, maybe six to eight, 10,000, somewhere in there miles ago so we changed that we changed the map sensor we changed the cam positioning sensor definitely got the vehicle running after all all said and done the next thing that i changed when the vehicle was still acting up a little bit was the whole throttle body assembly so that's only four bolts you basically just loosen up your air intake with a phillips screw or a flat screwdriver and pull your intake off when you pull your intake off there's four bolts there's one up here one down here one on the left and one on the top left and I'll show you that the way it looks here. You can see these four bolts, that's all it is. Now some people, if you wanna get with like a $50 fix, you could try taking this piece off here. You pull these little clips off. I think there's still some clips on the back. But you pull these little clips off and then this, this unit, the sensor actually pops off and you can buy a replacement sensor, which is like 50, 60 bucks. Me, in the, in the time of in and out of the hospital going, doing all that, I didn't feel like messing around with it. It was faster to change the whole unit. It's like 250 bucks, so I changed the whole unit. You can clean this out if you want to. You just don't want to touch this or throw off the, the position of that. So, like I said, not a pro mechanic, but I did change the throttle body. I changed the map sensor. I changed the cam positioning sensor, and I changed the mass airflow sensor. So again, not master mechanic by any means, but I did throw some parts at it based on the codes. I didn't have time to go through, like a good diagnostic person can go through and read the levels and make sure they're within spec. I didn't want to mess around. I didn't want to have problems in the future. So I did throw a couple parts at it, but I saved myself by doing it myself. I saved a lot of money. Cam positioning sensor, throttle body, mass airflow sensor, map sensor. Got it all done. 
The vehicle still wanted to lunge forward at stop signs. It was high idle. And I was getting a high idle error code. I forget what the, the code is. I'll put that in the description. But that was definitely an issue. So I had to relearn the idle. I went through with the snap-on Sonus, cleared all the, cleared everything out, and reset the idle, uh, which is under like the modules tab. You can like re, it's like a relearn type of thing. Got that all done. Vehicle is perfect. Runs awesome. I got all my power back. I think there's like 415 horsepower on these motors. But it, it definitely steps and goes, and it and when you're stopping, it doesn't. We almost want to take horsepower away. But uh, I hope this video. I know it's nothing crazy. I know it's not like an exact how-to, but it's something that I did see a lot of people asking about because these things were known. Uh, CP told me for variable valve variable valve timing issues, and that's a whole nother ball of wax. But my issues that were very similar to that, I, I had no misfire engine codes or anything like that. My issues, I think, were contained to these components. Truck's running fine. I wanted to follow back with that. All right, so we're warming up the old brute force right now. We're getting some saws ready. The storm is on the way. I got the heater going, which, man, that's a beautiful thing to have nowadays. But I'm probably going to take that saw. Every time there's a crazy storm, I, I like to get my saws ready, throw them in the back of the truck, get my to-go kit ready to go. This way, if somebody has a tree come down, we're supposed to get some ice and some rain. I can, uh, I'll probably take this top handle saw and the uh, 500i, but the quads get warmed up. I should talk about this brute force because this thing's a beast. A lot of people ask me about it. That's a little firewood rack I built on the back of that a couple years back just to go camping and haul some firewood, but we'll, we'll definitely talk about this in a future video. So I think that's all for today. We're bundled up. We got a campfire going. Truck's running good. We're ready to go for winter now. I think my traction control is going to work right. I got the bucking special and the vice here. We're going to Go out, maybe split some wood, get a couple things done. But a foot of snow, we should have a video coming tomorrow. I just wanted to pop in. Thanks for everybody that reached out to say hi to Katie and make sure she was doing all right. Everything's everything's going well. She's back at home now. But it was it was a lot of in and out this week at the hospital and running around and just trying to get things buttoned up. And now that we got the snowstorm, it's like let's hunker down, get cozy, and get a couple things done. But anyway, I hope that you all are staying healthy and safe. I wish you all the best. Stay warm if you're in Pennsylvania. Drive safe. I know the first snowstorm of the year or massive snowstorm of the year, it gets a little wild out there. So I hope you're doing well. We'll see you in the next pixel. I know it's nothing crazy, but I wanted to update you. If you have questions, I'll do my best to try to answer them, and uh, we'll see you soon.